there doll faces it's been a little while since I've been on my channel so I thought I would hop on and do an update for you and just talk about a few various different things that I want to cover so this video is going to be one of my update rambly kind of videos a little bit of a mishmash of various different things um, I wanted to start by talking about my trip to Glastonbury I just got back on Sunday night and it was absolutely amazing. It was my birthday trip. I had it planned since September and it couldn't have gone any better than it did. It was absolutely beautiful, sacred, wondrous, inspiring, illuminating, all the good stuff. And I feel very lucky and very blessed to have been able to take that trip. I haven't been to Glastonbury for a really long time. So it was lovely to be able to soak up all of those wondrous witchy high vibes. And I gave myself a little bit of spending money as well. So I purchased some books. I purchased some bits and pieces, some clothes, some candles. Candles. it was it was a sumptuous time it was really good and I just had a chance to unwind as well and reflect about things and spend some time with my partner and also with my friends a couple of friends who live in Bristol who came and spent some time as well and uh, yeah it was just a really nice time so I thought I would start by sharing with you guys a few of the photos from the trip now the reason I'm sharing photos as opposed to actually giving you guys a vlog which was my original plan was because I'm shit at vlogging, okay? I, <laughs> I'm so bad at it. The amount of different things I've planned to vlog in terms of, you know, days that I've spent doing witchy things or going and seeing certain things like sacred sites or just doing things that I think would be of interest to you guys that I could put onto the channel and I have not managed to vlog the goings on. Uh, there's been quite a few times now, I could probably count on more than one hand, the times that I've intended to be able to do some kind of video scrapbook or some kind of vlog of the day but to be honest with you I am just very very in the moment when I'm in the moment and I also don't really enjoy um, putting the camera in other people's faces and I feel like when I'm filming and I'm talking to camera or I'm focusing on getting footage if I'm with other people like a partner or friends or loved ones whatever I feel like they're not getting the attention they should be getting from me I feel like I'm kind of ignoring them I'm somewhat neglecting them in favor of getting the footage that I want or talking to camera and I don't like that feeling either particularly so it's kind of a a sort of combination of different factors that mean that I'm ultimately not a great vlogger and I'm kind of just slowly coming to accept that I mean I will definitely in the future film things that are more out and about but it's going to be more spontaneous than me planning to vlog and ultimately always failing so when I was in Glastonbury I really didn't I didn't vlog I just I got I went to the top of the tour, I came down to the bottom of the tour, and as we were getting to the bottom of the tour, I said, oh fuck, I didn't film anything, shit. Um, and that's very much what, what's happened to me before, where I've just been so in the moment, and I'm so at one with the experience, and I'm taking it all in, and I'm breathing it in, and I'm looking, and I'm enjoying, and I just forget to pull out my camera. And I'm glad that I forget to pull out my video camera or my phone, because I feel like that would take away from what I'm doing in that moment. Now, I just want to be clear for the record, I'm not saying in any way that people who vlog are somehow not connecting with the moment. If they are vlogging, for instance, at sacred sites or vlogging while they're on some kind of pilgrimage or whatever, I'm not saying that they're not in the moment. Everybody's different and everybody's capacity to be able to think about various different things at once is you know varied it's a spectrum and i think that for some people vlogging may even enhance the experiences in a really nice special way but for me that is not what happens for me it's actually kind of unpleasant um to force myself to vlog experiences when i just want to be so at one with them in the way that feels right for me so i'm there's no judgment in any way i know lots of people these days vlog everything god damn i've seen people vlogging the bubble bath they're having and <laughs> all kinds of shit um and that's totally fine but i'm just not naturally inclined to do that so i did get some photos at the top of the tour um so and i got some photos from chalice well and some photos from the abbey and all that kind of thing photos for me much easier so i thought i'd talk to you a little bit about the trip so basically i stayed at a hotel called the georgian pilgrim it's a really really old hotel <laughs> with like wonky floors and you know all that it's just fucking really old um i believe the pub is one of the oldest in the country and that was just really fun and amazing so we drove to glastonbury got to the georgian pilgrim checked in had a bottle of prosecco and just really enjoyed ourselves the next day in order to make sure i was properly prepared to go up the tour i had myself 
a massive vegan breakfast and it was bloody gorgeous and then we set off and made our way up the tour that's the first thing that we decided to do so the tour is an important place of pilgrimage for both christians and pagans i will leave some information about it down below if you don't know that much about it um, i've been up the tour before many moons ago and i recalled it being quite an arduous walk i was definitely out of breath by the end of it and once again i was completely out of breath by the time we got to the top this time around as well and uh and then there was a really heavy wind when we were at the top so that was quite scary i was getting blown around like a bloody rag doll all over the place but it was beautiful it was a really great experience you can see glastonbury really well all around from the top it's a really beautiful view it's a very moving place to be there's a great energy at the top there you you can really feel that for hundreds of years this has been a really important place for people to to come and be and you can feel that many marriage proposals have probably taken place there and many picnics and beautiful days and great memories and um yeah it's just a a really Really beautiful sight so it was so so lovely to go back and then uh, we made our way to Chalice Well we went to see the Sacred Spring at Chalice Well and that was a really magical experience again I'll leave some information just basic information down below so I don't make this video too terribly long um, but again this is a really important place of pilgrimage and visitation for both pagans and Christians and uh, the well is believed to like the spring is believed to um, obviously offer a water that is very healing and very high vibe and we took some water away with us both for myself for my magical practice and rituals etc but also for a friend of mine whose mother is interested in English mysticism and so that will be one of her Christmas presents as well so it was a really great experience very very beautiful energy at Chalice Well I love the way that they've kept it I love the way the gardens are laid out and uh, it was really lovely for me finally to be able to go and see Chalice Well because I've not been before I did want to go over to the spring on the other side of the road as well. I was advised by a few people to go to the White Spring as well. And I didn't do that because I bloody well forgot. But to be honest with you, I did have quite a long lie-in on the Saturday morning in the hotel because it had been quite a drive. And then I did get a little bit wrecked when we got to the hotel as well. So um, I'd had a lie-in. So by the time we'd been all the way up the tour and felt all the good fuzzy vibes and gotten all the way down again, it was time for me to go and do some shopping. So I had a look around a few of the shops and that was really awesome i very much enjoyed that and then the next day that was when i went to glastonbury abbey glastonbury abbey um was turned over during the dissolution of the monasteries if you uh don't understand what the dissolution of the monasteries is um it was uh, an initiative that was put into effect by king henry the eighth and basically he just went around all the monasteries and the abbeys and um and sort of stripped the church of its wealth essentially so that he could build a big navy and so that he could get himself out of the the pickle he'd gotten himself into because he was very irresponsible with his inheritance and he was kind of broke um and so he he basically um came up with this great big initiative to do a massive inventory of everything that the church had and then he just stripped the churches of all of their wealth and took everything took all of the gold and melted it down took everything of value basically and i'm really really interested in tudor history i'm particularly interested in the reign of king henry the eighth and i have a particular interest as well in the dissolution of the monasteries and i've been to see several um abbeys and cathedrals etc that um, are now in ruins essentially because they were turned over and the monks etc that couldn't live there anymore and so now they are preserved and we can go and visit them so I've been to a lot of sites of that nature now I must say that unlike my experience with the tour and with Chalice Well my experience with Glastonbury Abbey was quite different as you can imagine the energy at a place like that is um, an energy that can leave one feeling very conflicted and very emotional um, we were lucky enough to be given a tour as well by one of the living history guys who was dressed up as a Benedictine monk and that was really cool and he really helped us to go so much deeper with understanding the importance of the abbey and what happened there and um, he told us that basically the guy that ran the abbey and his accountant uh, were taken up to the tour and hung drawn and quartered uh, by the men that were sent to actually get the riches from the abbey and turn the abbey over uh, because they refused to give up some of the most sacred relics and bits and pieces so they were punished accordingly for stealing from the king 
Now this kind of thing, I've heard stories like this before and I understand, you know, that the dissolution of the monasteries was certainly not a peaceful, happy-go-lucky event. Um, there was a lot of, uh, there was a lot of violence and etc. And so, you know, I have an understanding of that. And sometimes I just think that, you know, when you are, when you have an awareness of a historical event like that and you're interested in going to the places that are so directly connected to those events, obviously there's going to be um, a psychological experience that you have. But on top of that, if you feel like you can catch hold of the energies of places and the auras of places and you really feel those vibes as well, then you also have this secondary energetic experience. And I think it's hard to tell where one part of the experience ends and the other part begins. But essentially, I definitely feel I had some degree of energetic experience at the Abbey that was difficult for me. And my friend, uh, one of my friends, Sheila, said as well that she really was on the verge of crying at one point during the tour. It was really making her feel a lot of things. And the tour guide said that lots of people that had come to the Abbey had seen the ghosts of monks and had felt weird things and all that kind of stuff. So it was very, very interesting and I feel so excited that we actually arrived at the time that one of the tours was starting as well so we actually got the um, the whole the whole talk the whole nine yards now a few things I really enjoyed about the Abbey particularly um, was that one of the floor tiles from the Great Hall has been preserved or as preserved as it possibly can be and I'll insert a photo of that particular thing here where you can actually pull back a couple of wooden doors and actually look um, into the ground and you can see one of the floor tiles from the Great Hall that has been preserved. That is very exciting and cool and that really blew me away. Glastonbury Abbey is also the site of the tomb of King Arthur. Now during the Reformation and the dissolution of the monasteries um, a lot of chaos ensued and we actually do not know where the tomb is now we don't know where it got to um, there have been some um, artistic recreations of what the actual tomb looked like and where it was set and, and how it would have been when it was found etc um, but we still can see the site where it's believed that Arthur and Guinevere were found in their graves and that was a very cool experience um, and anybody who's into like the Avalonian myths and and the whole history of Avalon and stuff definitely I'm sure would have been really excited to go to that place and, and just stand there and um, that was that was oh I'm getting goosebumps just talking about it it was the whole trip all together was absolutely amazing um, I really enjoyed myself the shops in Glastonbury are incredible um, it's one of those places that is just so beloved by so many witches and pagans and um, the whole high street all up and down as far as you can go is just filled with shops um, that are full of books occult books spiritual books you've got um, sound healing stuff you've got singing bowls there's all kinds of different objects statuettes jewelry uh, tarot decks all kinds of things so um, it is lovely to go but I wouldn't go too light in the pocket because even if you're not a super materialistic very consumeristic person per se you're going to want to purchase one or two bits from Glastonbury you know I, I think that it's fair to say that there's such a wealth of different things on offer and of course you also want to support the local business owners and make sure that the experience of Glastonbury remains and continues on by supporting the local businesses the local eateries and the local witchy shops and stuff so yeah I definitely think Glastonbury is a really great experience for anybody visiting the UK or visiting that area. Um, of course, it's also very close to Stonehenge, which I made the decision not to actually visit. I have visited Stonehenge quite a few times um, and actually I always prefer to just go on either the summer or winter solstice if I'm going to visit at all, because usually I can convince some friends to go as well. So I can kind of rope other people in and we can all go together in a car or a convoy of cars and enjoy the vibes together. And of of course the solstices are the only times where you can touch the stones and and, and actually um hold them close to you <laughs> and feel their wondrous ancient paternal energies so yeah basically I prefer to go then but it was very emotional and very moving for me on the way back from our Glastonbury trip to see Stonehenge uh, I could just about make it out through the the growing darkness and that was really beautiful and I did get very weepy and I'm getting weepy again now Whew because it's just just such a magical part of the country and a magical part of the world and it's just so intensely glorious for me that it only takes five hours to get there by car for me I mean that is just so lucky and I never take uh, I never take that for granted I'm always 
super grateful that I can have those experiences. So altogether, yeah, it's left me really emotional. It was a really great 34th birthday plan. <laughs> um, I'm now going to insert a picture of me with a, an old suit of armour from the hotel. So <laughs> enjoy that. <laughs> I know I did. And uh, yeah, if you ever get the opportunity to go, it's just absolutely incredible. It's so great. And I had a really lovely time. And uh, I feel fine, really great about turning 34. I'm really happy with how my 30s are going so far. I feel so much more confident and empowered in so many more ways in my 30s than I have done in my 20s. And so for anybody fearing their 30s, if there's anybody at the moment who's in their like mid 20s, late 20s, and they're kind of freaking out about it and it's making them feel weird and negative, I just wanna say, honestly, you've got no idea how positive it could be for you and how much more in control and how much more connected to yourself you may actually find that you are in your 30s. Um, um, I feel like it's a much better decade for me so far quite frankly so it's been really lovely and to celebrate my birthday I actually collected together 34 of my most favoured and loved videos that I personally really like from the big collection of work that I've got on my channel so obviously at this point on my YouTube channel it's a big body of work um, I've done hundreds of videos at this point but what I decided to do was create a blog post where I actually collected together 34 videos that I really love, that I had a really good time making, or that I feel emotionally connected to, perhaps more so than some of the other content that I've produced. So if you want to know what some of my favourite videos are that I've made and my reasons for those picks, you can click down below. I will leave the link to the blog post um, and you can go over and just have a look at 34 of the, the videos that I really kind of prize most highly, that I'm most proud of or that I'm most happy that I made. So how is everybody feeling about the holiday period? How many of you are feeling stressed about it? How many of you are feeling excited about it? Um, as some of you guys will know from previous Housework Ramble episode that I filmed for the channel, I actually don't celebrate Christmas at all. I don't purchase anybody any gifts. I don't want any gifts from anyone else. I don't send cards out. I don't really get into the holiday spirit per se. Uh, there are a few things I enjoy about Christmas. I do like the lights. I do own a couple of Christmas jumpers. I do approve of Christmas jumpers. They are Kellyanne Maddox approved. Um, I like, you know, some of the Christmas songs, but I personally feel like so many of the Christmas songs are so fucking overplayed. I think the radio play is almost disturbingly heavy rotation. It's not healthy. I think it becomes a little bit like noise torture, especially with a few key songs. I'm sure it's the same in the US and elsewhere that you've got these few key songs that are incredibly basic and uh, irritating anyway, but then hearing them played so much in shops and everywhere uh, in public etc in offices for a lot of people who listen to the radio in offices or they listen to the radio um, for their retail job um, or they have to put a Christmas album on during their retail shifts I think this is really unfair that people have to hear this shit over and over again especially when they are at their jobs making money just you know serving people I think it's really unfair that somebody, for instance, in a retail position or in an office might have to hear, I, f I wish it could be Christmas every day, like 10 fucking times. Um, that's just not fair and not on. But there are some Christmas songs I do, I do like, you know, and it is nice to hear them um, for this one time during the year. So I'd love to know how you guys are getting on with your holiday plans. I'm going to do as I always do pretty much and just chill at home. I think I've got a friend coming down from London who wants to kind of relax uh, on the family Christmas agenda this year and that can happen if you're somebody that doesn't really celebrate that holiday um, if you're somebody who never culturally celebrated it or if you're someone who has sort of like bowed out of it you may find that you are somebody that your friends can go to for a little bit of a haven if they want to take a break from it for a year or if they're not feeling going home to their family or for some reason they can't go home to their family you might be somebody who could like provide for them a little bit of a, an escape a little bit of a kind of like home away from home and a holiday away from Christmas um, not that I think anybody should expect that of you but you may find every once in a while that you can provide somebody with a Christmas free zone and that that is very nice for them you know if they're going through difficulties or mental health issues or they've just been through a breakup or whatever and they just don't feel like they want to slap a face on it and be happy-go-lucky um, they might really be grateful to you for being able to provide them with a space that is basically Christmas free there's no tree here 
there's no decorations nothing like that um and you know normally on christmas day i just eat what i want i don't work on christmas day i don't tend to work on boxing day either um i just relax and my best friend is with me because he also doesn't celebrate christmas and isn't keen on it either and uh yeah just basically watch films drink booze enjoy myself and that's really that's really it and it's so lovely it's such a great time so if you want to know more about my opinions on skipping christmas and not really being a part of that holiday and not getting involved in the festivities you can click below to that housework ramble if you haven't already seen it um i am picking up some volunteer shifts as well at my local night shelter working with the homeless and that's something i've done previously as some of you may know and it's something that I'm really enjoying doing this year. We have a floating night shelter in my particular area of the country where we utilise several different church halls um, within uh, this specific kind of uh, area, this specific county. So whenever the uh whenever the floating shelter is in my town which it is twice a week i've been volunteering doing befriend befriending shifts for three hours a night and that basically just involves um sitting with the people that are coming to stay there while they have their food making tea and coffee for them talking to them just making sure that they feel safe and happy and that they've got everything that they need and we have a nurse on staff as well and uh it's just a nice you know place where they can bed down and be warm um winter is can be really harsh here in the uk and it it does sweep people off and homelessness is really just year on year I'm watching it get completely out of fucking control um, and frankly it's left me feeling really angry and a lot of the time really powerless um, other than other than giving what I can when I see homeless people in the street I have you know and donating to the food bank I have felt helpless and i felt like i wanted to do more so picking up these volunteer shifts has been amazing if you're thinking of doing it if you're thinking of doing something like this in your area i would fully recommend it if you've got time to give um three hours it, it just feels like such a short time and i actually really enjoy it i have some really great conversations and if you are not very uh, extroverted and you're not really a great talker there are other things that you can do as well you can work in the kitchen we've got people that are kitchen volunteers that cook the dinner we've got driver's mates who go out with the vans um, to collect the donations and the food bank stuff and bring it back to the church hall so we've got people that go out and do that um, so we've got people that volunteer in different kinds of ways you don't have to be a befriender or greeter uh, but that's always what I like to do whenever I uh, volunteer with the homeless in my area because as you guys know I'm a big talker I'm also a big listener I love connecting with people on that level and it's how I really thrive it's my key skill so I really love to do that and I always have these just amazing chats with these people who are going through such difficulties such challenges such hardships and ultimately you know they're human beings too they have a rich and complex and nuanced story too and it, it feels great for them and for me just to be able to sit together have a few hot beverages and just talk and um, it's really amazing to know that those people are at least safe for that night and that I can be a part of that and I can hopefully bring some kind of richness to their experience even if it's just flexing my amazing tea making skills um, so yeah I'll be volunteering and I'll be volunteering through Christmas through New, Year, through New Year and then right on up until March and then hopefully once the night shelter closes and we move into spring I can talk to the guys that have organized the night shelter and see where else I might be able to be of service because it's something that I really want to continue doing as well I'm also going to be doing some environmental volunteering in the new year which I'm really excited about too I'm going to be doing some beach cleanup and stuff like that and and I'm really excited about that so much. Uh, obviously, I'm aware that there is this whole other um, there is this whole other aspect of um, environmental crisis and environmental responsibility that we need to examine. It's not just about the personal stuff like recycling and beach cleanup and raising awareness of things that might be happening in the local natural environment and stuff. It's obviously also about holding big companies accountable, and that's where a lot of the problem is. You know, going out and doing a beach clean up is um, is one part of it and it's important and it does raise awareness and I would never say it's not important um, every little helps everything you pick up and dispose of appropriately as appropriately as you can because a lot of this stuff is not made appropriately so it's hard to dispose of it in an ethical way but with beach cleanup it's about not harming marine life etc 
you know it's about um, making sure that there's a nice equilibrium where our beaches are concerned and we're not harming animals um, but obviously there is this whole other part to it where we need to hold big companies accountable and I'm thinking about what more I can do in that regard and that's a conversation I've been having with myself lately um, aside from obviously boycotting and petitioning I'm thinking about what else can be done in, you know to that end um, but planning to do a beach cleanup in January and get more involved with the beach cleanup volunteering team in my area feels good it feels like something that I can do it feels like something that is manageable and realistic and also puts me more in touch with my personal environment as well and so that's something that I'm really pleased I'm going to be doing and you will find wherever you are that there is some kind of environmental cleanup team some kind of volunteering you can get involved with and obviously it's an amazing way as well to meet people and make friends if that's something that you want to do more in 2019 and onwards from there you might want to think about volunteering as a way to do that because you meet a lot of like-mindedly conscientious people who are who are connected to what is going on in the world and want to make a difference and be of service so if that's you then volunteering will often help you to meet people like you which is an amazing feeling so while I'm on the subject of Yule and Christmas, I also want to talk to you guys a bit about what's available in the online store that is connected specifically to those themes and those festivities, etc. So I've got four main readings that are seasonal in nature that are available right now if you're watching this at the time of upload. Um, and I'm going to leave links to all four of them separately below. And I'm also going to leave a link to a blog post that actually breaks down uh, the uses for each one of these four readings, what they could be good for, and uh, what kind of energy they provide what kinds of information they provide I really really enjoy doing the Yule and Christmas and New Year kind of readings I love opening up this particular section of the store and I always feel really sad when I have to close it down I always end up thinking to myself oh another year gone you know and I get this little pang of kind of like see you next time see you next time festive readings uh, so if you have never had a festive reading from me before if you've never had anything for Christmas or winter solstice or a 2019 kickstart reading then you might want to uh, to look at that, that particular section of the store and come and get something I've got a snow queen reading which I launched last year which was massively popular last year and is proving to be popular again this year it really taps into the archetype of the snow queen and I suppose it's very much connected to what I think of the snow queen archetype as being about but essentially if you look at the breakdown of the information about this particular reading option you'll get a very strong sense almost immediately of whether or not it's appropriate for you I've also got a Christmas survival reading so if you are struggling with the holidays coming up if you are finding that it is difficult for you to see family members if you are low on energy and you feel like Christmas is really taking it out of you if you are a parent and you are having to you know deal with financial issues or deal with having to put your own feelings on the back burner in order to make the Christmas season as great as it can be for your kids if you are not looking forward to Christmas this year for some reason or another, definitely check out the Christmas survival reading. I designed it with you in mind. And then I always do a welcome to the new year reading. That's something that I've offered for the longest time. It's a two card reading. Um, so it's great for people that are on a bit more of a budget and want to move into 2019, feeling confident, feeling excited, feeling empowered. Um, the cards offer information, not only about what some of your key strengths and what your abilities could be in 2019. So your potential for the coming year, but it also provides you with some information about what you could do with that potential. So what you might want to build with that potential what kinds of projects might be able to come into fruition for you so there's a lot of information packed into those two cards so if you want a welcome 2019 reading definitely click below and check that out as well and the other reading that's available that's festive in nature is the Spirit of Yule reading. This is very old school. I designed this one a long time ago and I've kept it because it just works so well. It taps you into the themes of winter solstice. It really just connects you with those particular energies, those focus areas that I find to be most pertinent and that I think a lot of my clientele would agree are very pertinent. So if you would like a reading for Yule slash winter solstice and you feel like that's something that you could really use, definitely click below to go over to the spirit of your reading and see if it might be right for you i want to make sure that i include this announcement which i think ties in quite nicely with talking about festive readings and really just connecting with this particular time of year i'm going to be doing a live facebook event guys on the 27th of december and during the facebook event we're going to be talking about how to move consciously and really powerfully into 2019 so it's going to be an hour and a half live event a whole 90 minutes with the live chat going 
and I'm going to be talking about integrating the lessons that came through in 2018 and then deciding upon goals and strategizing and prioritizing for the new year. We're going to talk about how we feel about the whole concept of new year and we're going to really get to grips with our fears, our desires, our excitement, our stress, all of it. So it's not going to be based only on very high vibe, very hot, very sort of happy go lucky stuff. We are also going to look into what our fears are, what the negative feelings are as well. So please don't feel that you can only come along if you're going to be very upbeat and very joyful, because I know that for a lot of people, there are feelings of difficulty coming up around the idea of approaching a new year. Um, not everybody is feeling super inspired and super motivated and that's one of the reasons that I'm offering this particular live experience on my Facebook page. So if you do not follow my Facebook page and you enjoy the stuff that I put here on YouTube, you're definitely going to want to start following my Facebook page because I really do enjoy being there. I often post there. I often post long sort of reams of writing full of what I hope are encouraging uh, insights, empowering musings. I share um, inspiring words there, inspiring quotations there. Um, it's a place that I really enjoy and I would still say that it is my favourite social media platform out of like Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, you know, those things. Um, YouTube and Facebook to me are the ultimates. That's where I really enjoy. Facebook is, is really a bit of an online home for me. So if you're not following my page, I'm active on my page. We have interesting discussions on my page. I really enjoy it. So please make sure that you are following me and ensure that you get your notifications for my page so that you can be reminded of the live event that is going to be happening on the 27th of December. I'm really looking forward to that. The event is going to be called Creating a Conscious 2019 and it's going to be at 9.30 p.m. London time. I will leave down below the link for you to all of the details about that event and I would definitely recommend, um, you know, taking some time beforehand if you want to attend the live event on Facebook or indeed if you just want to watch the playback on your own time I'd recommend taking some time to think about what you want to carry into 2019 with you, what your lessons have been during 2018 and thinking about how you would like to utilise whatever you received from those lessons in order to walk into the new year feeling empowered and feeling ready to do something. And even if you are not somebody that is hugely into that new year, Gregorian new year energy, even if you are really down on things like new year's resolutions, that's fine. You do not have to be a new year's resolution person to come and enjoy the live event and get something from it but it is definitely about thinking about the symbolic changeover from one year to the next and it gives us I think an opportunity to be able to reflect on what has happened over the last 12 months and just make sure that we are bringing the very best of ourselves if possible to this changeover period and um, really what I want to do is generate some excitement or at the very least some empowerment when it comes to moving into 2019 so let's do that I hope to see a few of you there. So Pop-Tarts, I'm interested to know how many of you are going to be doing a depth year in 2019. I'm so grateful to Jessica the Story Witch for basically putting this idea out into the community, sort of sharing with us her intentions regarding the depth year. And I also watched uh, Brian McCormack's video a few days ago. There are a number of videos floating around. I know Erica from Raw Spirit has done a video as well. I'll leave those three videos down below, but I'm sure you can find lots of others swirling around around in the witchy, pagan and spiritual community regarding the depth year and the value of considering doing a depth year. I'm wondering if I should do a separate video on the whole concept of the depth year because it's something that I do definitely want to put into my 2019. Um, it's not going to look quite the same as other people's and that's for various different reasons to do with me and the way my life is set up. So it might be a good idea to do a separate video on the depth year. So I think I will. I think I will endeavour to do that and I will put that out in the next day or two. Um, but I definitely am excited about it. It's something that has sparked my imagination I would love to know down below if any of you are going to be doing a depth year and if you're listening to me and you're thinking Kellyanne what the fuck are you talking about please do check out the videos down below but essentially a depth year is where it's more about focusing on the things that you already have in your possession, getting the very most that you can get out of those things and using them and going more deeply with them and avoiding further consumerism or materialism. So instead of purchasing new decks, for example, or new books or new clothes, you will instead decide that you're going to work with what you have, enjoy what you own and maybe re-explore some of the things that you own and have owned for a long time, but you've completely 
completely forgotten about them. You don't maybe value them as much as you want to. So it's really about becoming really grateful for the things that you have and putting a spotlight on the things that you have. And I think that's really important. I think it's something a lot of us could stand to do and a depth year is not a really super prescriptive thing where everybody has to do the exact same thing and everybody has to apply the idea in the same way it's something that is very personal to the individual and I really appreciate that about it because as I said I think my version of the depth year and how it's going to work for me is going to be somewhat different and I'm excited to share those thoughts with you so definitely let me know if a depth year is something that you could do with um, I also want to talk I think in that video about minimum minimalism and about maximalism and how I am more of a maximalist than a minimalist you guys may have noticed over the course of time um, I want to talk about the idea of doing that in an ethical way I definitely want to talk about ideas regarding what I own and how I can really start to appreciate what I own all the more I want to talk as well about my relationship with books and reading and that might be a separate video again or it might be something that I want to incorporate into the depth year video I'm not sure yet um, but I have a little bit more time tonight so I may film it tonight who knows um, and I'll put it out like I said in the not too distant future because it's something I've really been thinking about and I would love to get your opinions on it so why not also put my opinions on it out into the world I guess okay so this has just been some updates some thoughts checking in with you guys I very much enjoy doing that. One thing I want to say before I head off is please do look out for shiny new things in the online store and I will be informing you guys of what is on offer and what I'm going to be coming out with as things begin to go live. Um, I did a community poll a few months ago here on YouTube in order to understand more about what you guys actually want to see from me in my online store and what would be useful for you. That was undoubtedly a very interesting experience which drew my attention to certain certain things that would be really interesting for you guys that you want to purchase from me that are not available in my online store and that I would very much like to um, involve myself with and create for you. So I have been creating, I have been creating some instant download video courses for you guys and also some worksheets and workbooks and printables that you'll be able to go through and fill out and they do include my original artwork and so it's all very exciting and I'm kind of delving into new areas and new territory, listening to you guys and what you guys want from me so I'm going to be launching things so please keep an eye out for that and before I go just I really do want to get this out there as well lately I have been noticing a big increase and I'm not talking about in the witchy and pagan community necessarily I watch a lot of different kinds of videos on YouTube I engage myself in a lot of different kinds of content on YouTube but I've noticed overall, let's just say, a big increase in the amount of adverts that are rolling within an actual video. Now, I do have adverts at the beginning of my videos. I do not have adverts at the end, and I have never had adverts that roll throughout the video. I intend to keep my adverts at the beginning of the video, and that does provide me with a nice little chunk of change that I can reinvest back into my business at the end of every month. And I feel like everybody is pretty much okay with that, and nobody resents that too much. Now, I have noticed, like I said, a big increase in people choosing to place adverts throughout their videos. Um, that is not something that I'm planning on doing. So the reason that I'm mentioning this right now is because I've noticed uh, underneath YouTube videos from time to time that you will see an audience member who is basically complaining, uh, sometimes in a really shitty way and sometimes just in more of a kind of concerned and slightly fed up way about the sheer amount of adverts that are rolling within a video because it can get very frustrating. If there's like five or six adverts in the midst of a 20 or 30 minute video yes that is very irritating especially when you want to be able to walk away from your phone or your laptop or your tablet and do something else while the video is rolling if there's an advert every five fucking minutes and some of them are two or three minutes long yes it can get irritating now I have noticed that some of the creators who are receiving these comments have written back and said I'm not putting these adverts in the middle of my videos. I do not know how this is happening. I don't understand it. I will try and stop it. I'm really sorry. Now, I'm not saying that those people are 100% telling the truth. Maybe they are not being truthful. Maybe they are not being genuine and they have actually placed the adverts into the videos. 
and maybe their intention is to remove the adverts because they can see that the audience is not having a great reaction to them i don't know um but if at any point you do see any adverts in the midst of my videos i want you to let me know down below um that you have seen adverts that roll in the middle of my videos because i am not doing that that is not my choice that is not something that i want to do so if these creators are being genuine and they're telling the truth and they have not placed any adverts in the middle of their videos and yet their you know adverts are materializing in the middle of their videos out of nowhere that's a problem um, that's not something that I ever want to do. I want my videos to run through without any adverts, especially because I know that it irritates me when there are too many adverts in videos that I'm watching. And also a lot of people that watch my videos tend to imbibe the information while they are doing something else. My videos are long. They are usually long as shit. You know, the majority of them are over half an hour. So it absolutely stands to reason, of course, that people are gonna want to be doing other things, tidying up, you know, all that kind of shit, moving away from their device and maybe just listening and not watching. And it is very irritating for those people to have to navigate their way through loads of adverts, you know? I sometimes watch videos while I'm in the bath. It is horrendous annoying to have a two and a half minute advert rolling in the middle of a video that you are trying to watch while you are soaking fucking wet and you have to lean over dry your hands with a towel to skip the advert because even if you go halfway through the advert to make sure that the creator gets the money you may not want to watch the whole two and a half minute or three minute advert it's it's overkill so I just wanted to let you guys know if you see adverts in the middle of my videos please alert me as soon as possible and it is not my intention that adverts should be there so I will attempt to remove them ASAP. I have very much enjoyed updating you guys with everything. Like I said I'm going to make a separate video about the depth year. I might make a separate video about reading and how I feel about that but I just wanted to come on and give you guys some information about Glasto and just check in with you and see what's happening with you, what's happening with your holiday period. Thank you so much for being being a part of my continued journey on YouTube and my continued journey elsewhere. Um, I'll catch you for the Facebook live event if you feel like doing that. So much love honeys and see you in the comments. Mwah, blessed be.